Girl, how's your week going? I can tell you already that mine is off to a fantastic start. I feel like I am fully embracing this month's focus of learning to shine. For me, that is shining while I am resting. Because to be honest, my life has been a bit of a whirlwind lately. But if you have been plugged in, you already know between moving to Dallas and finding my way, I needed some time to just recalibrate and to remember that I am fully equipped able and purpose to walk in God's will for my life. You see, the reality is that sometimes we get into these zones and it starts to feel like God's will for our life and our will are completely two different things, even though we have been obedient thus far to where God told us to go. Sometimes it still feels like there's a separation. We all love the scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11, before you formed me in the womb, I knew you. This is what the Lord is saying to the prophet Jeremiah. He says, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. He says, I set you apart in this scripture. And then when we're actually set apart, we feel a little lonely. We feel like we aren't able to step into what God has called us to do because it does require isolation and being set apart. I want to talk to a woman today who knows this very well. She understands fully how the will of God can so rapidly change your life that it begins to look foreign. So much has happened in the last seven years of her life. She went from being a teacher and serving others in that way to, I guess, still being a teacher, but this is a teacher with the caveat because she learned how to trade stocks. I don't think she could have anticipated that in this seven year span of her career that her course would become one of the number one courses on Teachable or that she would bring in over $55 million in revenue teaching this course. And yet the reality is that even though success feels like the ultimate goal, it's not always providing the level of confidence and assurance that one would anticipate. How do you shine in God's will when it feels like God's will is so foreign from anything that you plan for your life? Terry Egioma is going to teach us not just how she can put us on game to help us get our coins up, but also how she came to a place where she started to embrace that God's will for her life was to have wealth, was to own this season of her life where she could walk with boldness and confidence and have options and to release herself from the idea that she had to live within limits and boundaries in order to make other people comfortable. You are going to be blown away by her testimony and inspired by what God did in her and empowered to see what God would allow to happen in your own life. Let's get into it. I feel like figuring out who you are is a journey and there's who you are, (laughs) there's who you think you are, and then there's who God calls you to be. And you were telling me before we started recording that you recently had an experience in Chicago that kind of falls in line with this. So can you tell me about that? Yes. So I used to work in full-time ministry in Chicago, and I was the director of volunteers, but I would have to work with all these people that were more wealthy to help serve under-resourced kids in Chicago. Mm. And so I would go to all these churches, and I would be on stage, and I'd tell them about our program, and then they would come and serve. But this time, seven years later, I'm coming back, and I'm the person that I would have been talking to. Mm. Like, I'm the person that can give to the organization I went for a meeting with Goldman Sachs about the philosophy of wealth Mm. and it was only with like high net worth people. And I was, I was looking like just seven years ago, like I, I wouldn't have thought that I would be here at all, but God knew that I was going to be here. Like he had already seen me in, in this bracket, in this world as the future Terry, when I was crying in ministry and trying to just make it work and and working all, (laughs) all day. So the thing that I've really learned is that God sees us Mm -hmm. in our future state. Yeah. So he knows who we are past where we, we originally started from. Yeah. Okay. So you have to tell me what seven years is a short amount of time to go from Terry who was crying to Terry, who was now the very person who she would have been speaking to in these scenarios. What Mm -hmm. took place in seven years? Oh my goodness. Everything. The okay. world changed. Girl. <laughs> so I left. So I was working at um, By the Hand Club. It was an after school program. I left there to come found a school here in Dallas. Um, it was a, a charter school, and I was assistant principal at the elementary school. Okay. During that time, I was trading stocks on the side, trying to supplement my income, but figured out that 
you know what? I want to do trading full time. This work environment is a little bit too toxic. I just want to be trading, living my life and traveling all around the world. So I started making sure that I could trade enough to earn $300 a day. Mm. That's all I needed to replace my income as assistant principal. Okay. So I started working at it, working for about a year, working on the side, trying to see how I can do. Finally started making $300 consistently and then quit my job as assistant principal and started traveling all around the world. Okay. So I was in Thailand. I was in South Korea. I was in wow. Vietnam. I was all over. And just trading to afford my, my travels, trading to afford my income. And while I was gone, people started asking me to teach them. Mm -hmm. So I was with about, there was about 20 of us that were together. And they were like, Terry, can we take you to coffee? We want to learn how to trade. Terry, can we, can we buy you dinner? We want to learn how to trade. So I did my first class in Thailand, my second class in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And then I came back because I had to finish seminary. I was going to Dallas Theological Seminary, and they were like, girl, if you don't finish in seven <laughs> years, we're going to start you all over again. Mm, seven mm -hmm. is, a, now that I'm thinking about it, right, seven is yeah, important pivotal, for me. Yeah. Yes. So came back to Dallas and finished up seminary. And that last week, my friends were like, so we saw you on Instagram teaching everybody else how to trade. Are you going to teach us? And I asked the advi advisors at DTS, Dallas Theological Seminary, hey, can I host a class? Mm. My friends want to learn how to trade. About 71 people showed wow. up. And then other people from other places, so Atlanta, California, started asking me, well, Terry, we want to learn too. And I was like, well, I can't come everywhere. Let me put this online. I put it online. This is 2018. 2018, I did my first cohort, online cohort. About 35 people came. Girl, I thought I was balling. Because <laughs> I was making the same amount as my assistant principal. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, yes, I'm a, this is amazing. But the next year, it blew up. I, became, I made my first million in revenue mm. in that same course in 2019. I've been the number one seller on that platform for the past three years. Wow. And actually, it's pretty public. Like, one of the years, like, I didn't make one month less than a million a month. Mm. So it's just grown and grown and grown. And so that's how now I can come back as the person that is giving the money instead of the person that's asking for it. Okay, so the yeah. extent that most of us know, well, I won't say most of us, I'm going to say me and probably about two other people know about trading or like the little comments we get on Instagram where it's like, come trade, come trade. Like, what is trading stocks? So let's just think about it like, so I used, I've always been an entrepreneur. I used to have a candy store. Okay. So I would go to Costco, buy the blow pops for, mm -hmm. you know, bulk, the big mm -hmm. bag. Mm -hmm. So I'd buy the blow pops for like, 10 cents a blow pop and then go sell it at school for 50 cents. Okay. That's literally what we're doing in the stock market too. Mm. There's a share of a company, let's say a share of Nike. There's a share of Nike and it's going for, let's just do round numbers, $100. Mm -hmm. We'll buy it at 100, wait till it goes up to like 105 or I'm making up numbers, sure. but it goes up a little bit and then we'll sell it. Literally the same concept as any other business. You're trying to buy things that are inexpensive and then sell things that are expensive. It's a, it's just a market and a negotiation between buyers and sellers. That's it. Wow. Okay. So I'm sure there's going to be lots of questions about that as I got to let that <laughs> marinate and sink in because that seems very simple, but yeah. it also feels very complex considering that in seven years you were able to teach this many people and I'm sure they're experiencing success too. But I want to rewind. I want to know more about like how you grew up, how has, no, how do I want to start this? Okay. As you have become more successful, is success what you thought it would be? No, no. When I made my first million, I had been working towards that for so long, I thought that it was going to feel different. Mm. But when it happened, it was like, oh, is this what it is? Mm. You still feel kind of lonely because mm. now there's less people who you can talk to and who get it yeah. and understand. You're busy. Yeah. So the things that you thought you would have, like this freedom and this, oh, man, I'm going to get to travel and nobody's going to talk to me. No, boo-boo, you, you made a business. So now yeah. you're more busy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I don't know that it felt like I thought because I thought that it would be like smooth sailing. Mm -hmm. I'd be on a beach somewhere chilling. But I think I had more of that before mm -hmm. I had the money because I – I was more intentional with it. Yeah. So now I think I'm finding my intentionality back again. So I've decided recently, okay, 
you have the will. Now let's let's operate in your will mm. and not feel bad or feel any kind of guilt or feel like, oh, I should be doing something else. But no, God has allowed you to have this. Now let's see what it looks like to operate in it. Wow. Okay, so how different is your experience now than the experience of the people who you knew eight years ago? And have you been able to maintain those same connections as your life has changed and evolved? So some, yes. Mm -hmm. I think the coolest thing is I've been blessed with a lot of friends that cheer for me. Good. And that's been a blessing. Mm -hmm. Like versus you know, negativity or anything. Like we recently had a conference. I had a trade and travel conference and I hosted it here in Dallas. Okay. And I like, do you play spades? Oh, baby. Okay, good. <laughs> if you said no, we were going to have to stop. Yeah, no, mm. no, no. <laughs> so we had a big competition and I invited my spades partner. Now my spades partner, he'd been my partner for about eight good years. Okay. And so he came and again, it was just the same. Like we, it felt like we were right back in the middle of everything. Good. So that's been nice. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the reason yeah. why I ask that is I do think a lot of people think that if I achieve X, Y, and Z, then that's going to somehow fix the things that have happened in my life or that's going to make everything better. And so I think it's important that we talk about the whole journey connected to becoming better because I think so many people end up yeah. selling themselves short. And so I was curious to understand like what type of work have you had to do as you have experienced success to still be whole and content with in yourself um this week at womany ball we're talking about like hope to shine as i am yeah. and the thing is that like who you are changes from day to day and stage to stage and so if you could go back to who you were man i'm gonna say but not even seven years ago but like who you were when you were a little girl and what your experiences were like then armed with what you know about yourself now what would you tell her that she didn't know about herself? I think Terry, the little girl Terry, has always been a hard worker. I'm, I'm half Nigerian and half American. So I think the Nigerian part of me has always been like, I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna do the best I can. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna try to get the best grades. Um, but I also try to make sure that that everyone else around me was happy. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not so much that I was a people pleaser, but I, I think I've always been a server. Yeah. So, like, all my life I've tried to serve and make sure, okay, are you okay? How can I help you? And I, I was the one that liked to be behind the scenes. Okay. Like, if we were doing a production, even though I knew that I could be in the front, if we were doing a production, I would be the one, like, on the mic, behind the scenes, making sure everything was good. Yeah. Right? Um, but I think what that led to is even now I give and give and give and give and forget about me. Mm, mm -hmm. And so I would tell the, the younger me, like, it's also okay to serve yourself. Yeah. And that you're just as worth it as everybody else. And, and I'd also say like, so recently I decided I was a genius. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, yeah. sometimes you got to let yourself know. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, and here's the reason why. I'm a genius because my dad is a genius. Okay. And he, like, literally took the whole, I guess it's Whistler something test, mm -hmm. and he passed it. So I haven't taken the test, but I just assumed because it's he was. probably me too. Right? <laughs> like, he, some of that run, run, For rubbed sure. off on me. But in the same way, like, I think, like, God is a genius. Yeah. And it's okay to also like so this is the other other point it's okay also to speak highly of yourself mm. and not humble yourself all the time i'm just learning that like and not in a bad way not in a braggy way but just realize like because my dad is a genius and my bigger father literally is a genius yeah. i am that and embody that and and understand it and fully embrace it so i would tell myself that too my younger self Okay, because you have said a word with this now. Because we, I don't think that we have mastered fully the idea of like, yes, I am gifted and talented, but like, also, I don't want to say it because I'm afraid that owning it. Why do you, why don't you think we own it? If we own it, then what? What do we think will happen? I think we think that our friends will disown us. Mm. I think we also think that we'll look like we're bragging. Yeah. Um, 
I also think we feel like we'll isolate ourselves because we want to be, or at least for me, there's been times where I want to be like everybody else. I want to fit in. Yeah. And we're afraid of what not fitting in feels like. Mm -hmm. But now mm -hmm. you, I mean, do you feel like you are comfortable with no longer fitting in? I just got there. Yeah. Like literally just got there. Mm -hmm. I went to Bali and I was there for a month mm -hmm. and I was trying to come home. Um, and, but I'll say all that to say, like, I went to Bali and I did some just inner work. Mm -hmm. And I've been afraid to show people who I was because I thought that they would disown me. Or mm -hmm. I thought that the, like, on Instagram, people are just so mean. Mm -hmm. When you show them who you really are, yeah. then, like, well, maybe they won't relate or maybe they'll start being mean. Um, but now I've gotten to a point where I just don't care. And that's okay. Oh, that's so good because I do think there is you know, I, I like to call it the struggle Olympics. Like we celebrate one another culturally for like how rock bottom we are, but we don't always mm -hmm. express once you've made it to the other side. Like it's almost like there's a shame or a survivor's guilt for not being that way anymore. So you kind of hide it and yeah. people know you aren't, but it's like, if you knew how far removed I was from that, maybe you wouldn't accept me anymore. But I think owning that can be very aspirational and it does require you to be comfortable in it in your own skin. A lot of us have wealth now. We're growing as a as a culture. We're growing as a people. Like we can do more. And if we keep having this narrative that all black people and this is not everybody's narrative, sure. but that we we're all lower, that we can't pay or that we then we're never going to rise. So your career has kind of like taken off in these seven years, like as you have been navigating conversations about trading, what do you think has been like one of the most common misconceptions about what you do? That I'm gambling. So the, mm. one of the big, there's there's about four big misconceptions about trading. Okay. One of them is that, well, trading's too risky. Like you're just gambling. And that's not true. We actually look at charts and we, we pick really strategic trades. Mm. So we're not actually gambling. We have, we have high probability of success for the trades that we're taking. Nice. And if we don't find that, then we don't take the trade. Mm -hmm. So that's one of them. Another one is you have to have a lot of money to invest mm. or to trade. To invest in general, you can start with something really low. And then some of the stocks that I love, they're the cheapest that I've seen in a long time. For example, same thing, Amazon, Google, all of them. Within $200, you could get a share. Mm -hmm. I So I was investing or wanted to invest in Google when their IPO came out. Okay, That was my senior year of high school. Not to date myself, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> and it was $83 when it first came out, wow. $83 a share. Now, 20 plus years later, you can get the same, uh, you can get a share of Google for almost the same price. Wow. So it doesn't take a lot of money to invest. It's just the courage to say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put some of my money aside and actually purchase the stock instead of just buying or using the company. Mm -hmm. Right? So that's another misconception. And then one last one is that, oh, it's going to be too hard. I got to know a lot of math and I got to know. One, like I was in elementary school. I worked, you know, I worked in elementary school. Like if I could break it down, anybody could learn it, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's not that tough. Mm. Really, it's more like business savvy. And yeah. a lot of us, we have business savvy. Yeah, just to make it. just to, Right? Yeah. We know how to negotiate. We know how to hack. We know how to get whatever we want a little bit cheaper. That's the same thing you're going to do with stocks. You, instead of getting full price, you're going to wait for it to come down to a better price. And then that's when we purchase it. So it's more business savvy. How much, well, I'm sure it plays a lot. Finance is obviously not my thing, which is why I enjoy learning to love. How much does the climate of the economy, the recession, are we in a recession? Is yeah. it going to get worse? How much of that is playing a role into what you do right now? All of the um, things in the economy play a big part. Okay. One of the things with recession, we know recession is coming. But because of that, we can be ready for when stocks go down in price. Okay. So it's about like being prepared versus being reactionary. Mm -hmm. So this would be the time to learn. This would be the time to start saving your money so that when stocks come down, you're good. Okay. It'd be like knowing that COVID was coming ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Then you're like, oh, okay, it's coming. Let me get, let me get my books yeah. ready, my coins done. Um, 
also because I look at stock charts, we can kind of forecast where where companies will go, mm-hmm. and then the news helps reach those levels quicker. Okay. So, for example, if the Fed makes an announcement, yeah. it'll move the market really quick, but usually it'll move it into a place that we already thought it might come. Okay. So, if, say, for example, the overall market is at 4,300, the S&P 500 is mm-hmm. at 4,300. If the Fed makes an announcement and says, okay, we're about to raise interest rates, we know it might fall, but but looking at a chart, we could say, okay, it's going to fall to 4,200. Like, we can kind of estimate. So the news plays a part, but it just moves things a little quicker to where we m- thought it may already go. Okay. That makes sense? It does. It mm-hmm. does. I have to ask you, like, or such a girly question. What was, like, your first big splurge when you were like, okay, I have really, like, made it to the other side. Things are turning around. I'm going to go ahead and get me a blank. Houses mm. are my pleasure. Okay. Like, I've been in real estate as long as I've been in trading in the stock market. Okay. I used to actually help teachers relocate to Dallas. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. So now I bought a big house, and my mom moved into the house, so that was nice. I retired my mom. That Aww. was a big thing. Mm-hmm. I hired a lot of my family. That was another big splurge. Amazing. So those are some of the things. How is it working with family? Girl, people are crazy. <laughs> Everybody crazy. No, I'm just but kidding. then it's like also like these are the people I trust. But you, this is the crazy I trust. <laughs> yes, exactly. Like that's the part that was nice. Like mm-hmm. I never had to worry. Like, are they taking money? Yeah. And then my family, they actually are really hard workers. Mm-hmm. So that was a blessing. Like I didn't have to worry about like were they giving their best? They were. Yeah. They were gonna try their hardest. Like it was not just about me. Like this was we we have a business. We're trying to make sure that people are learning. We want the people we're teaching to be successful. So it was more about like how are we all serving? So that was good. But we have had to make some changes recently just because I feel like when you hire family, they they don't know all of the yeah. like they're not skilled enough to take you always to the next level Mm -hmm. so in our case we had to actually like hire some new people that know how to get to that next level yeah and bring some talent how do you define the next level for you first i gotta sleep Uh, that would help right i know that's right that would really help (laughs) (laughs) sleep one yeah um two like I'm in a season right now where I think I'm kind of quiet and waiting for the Lord to reveal it because okay. I still feel like all of this is definitely God. The yeah. way that it happened so quickly and money has just come and there was one lady who actually prophesied to me and she was like, Terry, if you, um, she's like, God, she had a dream mm-hmm. and she was like, God told me to tell you that as long as you keep obeying him, he'll keep pouring resources out to you. Wow. And then it started happening. So I I really feel like this is a God thing. And at some point, he's going to tell me how he wants to use his money. Mm -hmm. Like where he wants me to fund, what ministries he wants me to give to, et cetera. Yeah. So I'm kind of waiting a little bit for what God has next. But I do think there is something about like finding comfort in this current stage and then showing other people so that it becomes normalized. Mm. Because I think that there is something about like normalizing wealth, normalizing black women with wealth, normalizing um, black women being at this higher stage, and not even just women, but but black and brown people all just being at a higher level. Yeah. And there's something that I can speak to in that world, and I'm not quite sure what exactly it is but or what it looks like, but I'm excited about it. Do you think that men in general, black men are ready for a woman who is empowered by her own wealth and identity and confidence? Honestly, I think they are. I do too. And I think that some of them have seen their their sisters and their mothers operate at such a level of excellence that it's actually what they expect. Mm. And I think that wow, if there's a, another woman that comes along that doesn't meet meet what they saw at home, then they're a little shocked by it. Yeah. So I think they're ready. Yeah. Okay, so how are we going to get you this rest? What are our plans? Girl, okay, first we're going to go we're going to go to Greece. Okay. Um yes. definitely get in that. Taking everything off of my calendar. Is that hard? Does that Yeah. I think learning how to say no. Mhm. You asked me earlier about things that I've had to learn and learning not to say yes to everything was something I had to learn. And I'm still kind of going through that, like, oh, this speaking engagement or this comes or, oh, Terry, we got to, do you want to be in this meeting? No, I'm good. Thank you. 
I'm exercising right now because I'm still not good at it, but <laughs> that felt good. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel like, uh, I don't know, I feel like when things started changing in my life that I worried that, like, is this just a moment or can I trust this as a lifetime? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. is this a moment or a lifetime? How do you feel about that for yourself? Have you settled into like, this is my life? Mm -hmm. Or are you hanging on to it like it's a moment? I definitely felt like it was a season. Yeah. I thought, especially with trading and investing, I thought, well, maybe just during COVID, like yeah. it'll be a couple years and then people will forget about investing and they won't need me anymore. Mm -hmm. And then COVID came and passed and people still wanted to learn how to invest. Wow. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I guess it's still coming. Um, with finances for the online course, I definitely felt like, okay, we've reached a million. No one's going to buy it anymore. Yeah. People kept buying. And then, <laughs> so, so every time I put my own milestone on something, I think that guys come back and be like, nah, that wasn't, that wasn't, you put a cap here and there's much more to come. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. So before we go, I have to know what woman in your life has been the most influential to you as it relates to pursuing your authenticity okay so my mom is here so i gotta at least yeah, say her name say that right mm -hmm. right <laughs> thank you mommy love you um <laughs> but you know who who it really is my grandmother really her birthday mine is june 19th hers was two days after me june 21st okay she was feisty and she's the one who told me to quit my job mm. she had been praying like i was at the school and you know how you get in that state where you're a little nervous to quit? Yeah. And for me, I was in it. And now I'm kind of like, well, the, you know, the next person going to have it easy because I went through the hard stuff. And yeah. And she was like, no, I've been praying. I think you can leave. Wow. And she also cussed a little bit. Tell them to kiss you. Love right. that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. She was feisty. <laughs> um, but I think she was the one who was just like, like, there'd be times where this is so random, but she would be undressing in front of the mirror and I'd be like, Granny, somebody's going to see you. Well, if they see me, they're going to get a good peek <laughs> or something. She just had this like fearlessness yeah. that I hope to embody. What do you hope that she knows about the impact that she's had on who you are today? I hope she knows that she was a woman of God, that I got that, mm -hmm. that that trickled into me. Um, just the the faith to know that God is there and God is real, like that that big faith yeah. that I got it mm -hmm. um, from her, seeing her and then I can still carry it. She also was like a Bible study teacher and she talked to a lot of people. I think I got that too from her. Oh, yeah. Um, but I also want her to know that I didn't give up mm. and that like, she, she's always been one to encourage me, like, Teresa, you can, my name is Terry Latrice. Okay. Uh, she's like, Teresa, you could do anything. Like, you can really do anything. And I, I believe her. Wow. Wow. Okay. I don't, I don't know. You've given us so much today. I guess I just want to know, before we close out, someone's listening and maybe they're thinking to themselves, like, I don't know if I'm smart enough. I don't know if I have as much time, but I am curious about what would be possible if I just dared to try and take a course or learn more about trading. What would you say to them? Try and take your first trade. Okay. That would be the thing I would say. One of the things that... Um, that we have now is this like take your first trade challenge mm -hmm. and I would say just take a baby step do that it's like five days you learn about the market and you just try to take your first trade just take one mm. at our conference we had about 20 people take their first trade they made 10 cents <laughs> but <laughs> they were is. so excited yeah. it's just the the first like I just gotta get over the hump yeah. I just gotta try I gotta get over the fear so take your first trade. Then you can decide whatever else you want, but just take your first one. Okay. Well, while they're taking their first trade, we hope you take your first nap in a Thank long you. time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom with us today. I know it's going to help a lot of people. Thank you for having me. My pleasure.